I'm Liz Moser, a Mayo Clinic and National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach. I was just at my doctor's for um, a yearly physical. She asked about how much alcohol and caffeine I drink, which is none, how much I exercise. If you're up on my vlogs, you know I'm uh, ramping up my cardio, my strength training, and my NEAT, N-E-A-T, which stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. And we talked a whole lot about my whole food, um, plant-based diet. She was really impressed and, and wished she ate a bit, a bit less animal products herself. So all told, we were together for about an hour. And at no time did she ask about my sleep hygiene or habits. Not a word about how much I sleep and how refreshed or not I feel when I wake in the mornings. That doctors should inquire about sleep habits never really occurred to me until I read Why We Sleep. Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams by Matthew Walker, PhD. Why We Sleep is my latest book group, book, book. Shout out to the three ladies in my group. Mwah, I love you guys. This book blew my mind in so many ways, way more than I could do it justice in a short vlog. So therefore, I'm only going to hit what I thought were, were the highlights. I think sleep should be a topic of conversation in a yearly doctor's visit because routinely sleeping less than six hours a night, which many of us do, weakens our immune systems. Wow. Furthermore, lack of sleep is directly linked to diabetes, our BMI, Alzheimer's disease, and cardiovascular health. I bet you didn't know that when the United States loses an hour in the spring because of daylight savings, cases of heart attacks increase the next day. And the opposite happens in the autumn when we gain an hour heart attacks decrease. That's pretty crazy data, isn't it? Dr. Walker has worked with our military and several professional sports teams as a sleep consultant. He also advised Google and Nike to develop employee sleep workshops and on-site napping facilities for their employees because productivity, and creativity increase after a restful sleep. That said, although Dr. Walker recommends an afternoon siesta if you feel you need a nap, please keep your naps before 3 p.m. to ensure a good night's sleep. Also, when you fall asleep at night in front of the TV, consider that a nap. And those late night naps do not, do not, do not support a restful night of sleep. Weight loss and weight maintenance. Research shows you will lose lean muscle instead of fat if you attempt to lose weight while starving yourself of sleep. If that wasn't bad enough news, <laughs> sleep deprivation also leads to increased food cravings the next day and overeating, mainly of processed, sugary, and fatty foods. Um, I'm now asking my clients to gauge their sleep to what they consume and the severity of their cravings the next day. Do they notice a correlation? And they usually do. REM sleep or rapid eye movement or dream sleep directly facilitates the absorption of new information. Have you ever noticed a difficult or challenging concept you're trying to learn? It somehow becomes achievable or doable the next day after a restful night of sleep. That's no coincidence. REM sleep facilitates learning and problem solving. It heightens creativity, increases work productivity, and the processing of emotions. Dr. Walker describes our REM dream state as a soothing balm for our feelings. REM is our own personal nightly therapy session. Furthermore, much of our REM sleep happens later in the night, in the last hour or two of sleep. If you shortchange yourself of that precious time by getting to bed late and waking early in the morning, as many do, you are robbing yourself of cementing new knowledge, generating memories, and emotional soothing. Caffeine. It sure surprised my clients and me to learn that 25% of the caffeine consumed from tea, coffee, chocolate, sports drinks, or sodas is still in your system eight to 10 hours later. Do you regularly reach for a chocolate or a caffeine rich soda in the early afternoons when your energy naturally dips? Right, you might have an unevolved office that offers vending machines instead of nap areas. Well, if you reach for that caffeine, then a quarter of it is still in your system when you attempt to fall asleep at 10 or 11 p.m. 
No wonder then you have a hard time falling asleep and your sleep isn't as restorative as it could be. On the other side of the coin from caffeine and stimulants are alcohol and prescription sleep aids, such as Ambien. Despite their drowsy effect, they do not enable restorative sleep. In fact, think of them as sedation. Please put them in the same category as anesthetizing drugs you would be given before surgery. How much sleep you need is personal and varies from individual to individual. That said, the recommended window is seven to nine hours. And, and to really give your body a chance to tell you, show you what it needs, perhaps the first step is to stop influencing it one way or another with caffeine and other stimulants or alcohol and other sedatives. With those minimized or better yet entirely out of your system now, you are ready to ascertain how much sleep your unique body requires. No surprise, Dr. Walker recommends a regular seven day a week sleep schedule. I'm sure you've heard that before. A set time that you go to bed and wake up. There is something kind of unsexy or even boring about this, right? I mean, that means your Saturday night has the same bedtime as Monday and you wake up at the same time on a Tuesday that you do on a Sunday. However, if your doctor prescribed this for your cardiovascular health, blood sugar levels, or expanding waistline, would you, would you heed her suggestion, her prescription? I have lived this set sleep and wake lifestyle for several years, with only a few exceptions throughout the year for, for social events. On those days, I still wake at my usual time to complete my morning routine and then extend my afternoon meditations or just take a nap. I can attest that it is doable and it generates restful sleep, facilitates steadier moods and a calmer demeanor in general. Since reading Why We Sleep, I'm experimenting with shifting my bedtime from 9.30 to 9 p.m., giving myself that eight hour sleep window as Dr. Walker recommends. Even though I've felt rested with my seven and a half hour schedule while being caffeine and alcohol free, I should add, I don't want to rob myself of any early morning REM sleep, particularly now that I just started um, practicing the piano and relearning French. I, I want to give my brain ample time to process and absorb this new knowledge. I'm Liz Moser, a Mayo Clinic and National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach, and thank you for watching this vlog about sleep and the need to treat it as yet another powerful tool in your ever expanding wellness toolbox. If you have any questions about this vlog, health, wellness, or wellness coaching with me, please reach out via my website at lizmosercoaching.com. Bye for now, be well, and I will see you next week with another video.